but you've got a space that's not fully finished, find ways to make it work for the photo shoot because it will always, always, always make your shots look better. Think about the context of the project and what makes sense. Spend time doing some research and planning and getting inspired. Plan to put some time and attention towards your photo shoot and just treat it like the investment that it is and it will pay off. Welcome to the Designers Oasis podcast. I'm your host, Kate Bendewald. If you're tired of one size fits all advice to running your interior design business, you're in the right place. Join me each week as we dive into topics to help you run a thriving interior design business without the hustle. We'll talk about the business of design, but also mindset and mental health, because I know when you thrive, so will your life and business. It wasn't that long ago that I stepped away from my corporate interior design job to build my own design business so that I could realize my own creative dreams, have more time with the people I love and serve my clients at the highest level while making more money than I ever could have working for someone else. It wasn't always easy and I made my share of mistakes along the way. Fast forward to today and I've learned a thing or two. Since then, I've built multiple six-figure interior design businesses on authentic word-of-mouth referrals with many repeat clients. And I want to share it all with you, the ambitious, inspired, and I get it, occasionally overwhelmed interior designer who shares this dream of transforming lives through the art of interior design. You can do this. Thank you for letting me spend part of this day with you. Let's get to it. Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Designers Oasis podcast. I'm your host, Kate Bendewald, and I am so excited to be talking about something really kind of fun today. We're going to be talking about how to style a an interior design project for a photo shoot, for your portfolio, for magazines. So earlier this month, I had a three day photo shoot blitz was three projects shot in three days. And uh, typically I would never do that because a single photo shoot takes a lot of work, but uh, it was just a timing and a situational thing that we had to get them done. And I'm so grateful that we we did it all because I was just able to put all of my energy and my mindset on these three things for a little while, but now they're done. I've got the pictures back and I'm getting ready to work on promoting them. But as I was going through this process, as I was planning for it, as I was preparing for it, there were so many uh, little things that I kept thinking about that I was like, oh, I'd love to share some of these, these tips and insights and, and um, strategies because I've done a lot of photo shoots over the years for my portfolio. You know, I'm always learning. I'm always discovering new ways of doing things, uh, but there's a handful of things that are just tried and true, things that I know must get done and I know has to happen. So today we're, we're not only going to talk about the styling aspect of styling your shoots, but also there's so much work that goes into preparing for a photo shoot. Uh, they are an investment. I cannot emphasize enough how um, beneficial it is for you to invest in professional photos for your projects. And yes, they're an investment. Uh, hopefully you are building in that kind of margin on your projects so that the margin on your projects is actually going to cover the cost of your photographer. I'll be honest, in the early days, I wasn't there yet, but I still knew that it was important to get those photos. So I just um, charged that those fees to my marketing budget. And that's just how I did it in the early days. And, and now I'm at a place where, you know, we have enough profit, we have enough margin on every single project that we can easily cover and pay for our, our professional photographer, for assistance to help me during photo shoots, uh, for, you know, the additional things like uh, floral and botanicals that happen, that, that come into a shoot, the, those kind of things that you just have to purchase and you, you don't, you know, get to keep them, but you do get to enjoy them for a little while. So we're going to get into all of that right now. So the first thing I want us to, I, I want to just mention is that I'm going to talk today with the assumption that you are working with a professional photographer. Now, if you 
have not done that before, I highly recommend that you go back and listen to, I will link it in the show notes. And I don't know off the top of my head, which episode it is, but I did a really great interview uh, with my interior photographer, uh, Jeff Jones. He is phenomenal. He is so good. And so we talk about the process of searching for interviewing, hiring, and working with a professional photographer. So we'll be sure to link to that in the show notes. If you need to put pause on this and go back to listen to that episode and come back to this episode, you're welcome to, or you can listen to it afterwards. In any case, I'm going to um, be talking about all of this today with the assumption that you are working with a photographer. You're not doing cell phone pictures. Um, You know, from time to time, those are fine for social media. I think they're really great for showing process pictures or behind the scenes. But when you're trying to share that final project, and definitely if you are aiming to get your work published in any sort of a magazine or an online uh, press, you really do need to be working with a professional. So, all right, so let's let's move on. A couple of quick things. When it comes to planning a photo shoot, I don't want you to be in a hurry. You need to have time to, of course, hire and find your photographer and then hopefully have a good working relationship. And then it'll be easier after that to hire them again, but also to plan for it. You need to find dates for the photo shoot that are going to work for not only you and your photographer, but you really do want to ask your clients to be gone for the day. And so it needs to be a date where they have the ability and flexibility to be gone for an entire day or at least a half a day, uh, especially for obviously residential projects. If you are working in commercial environments, uh, you're going to have to work with them to understand what are, what are your options? Can you work with them? Um, uh, Are you going to have to fit this photo shoot in before opening or operating hours, those kinds of things. So um, there is some coordination that has to happen first. In residential projects, here's why it's so important to ask your clients to to be gone. And this is especially important if you're shooting multiple spaces. If you're just shooting one room, let's say you did a big kitchen renovation, you might be able to get away with them being there. But the reality is the place is going to look like kind of a mess behind the scenes. And I'm pretty sure I took a couple of behind the scenes photos from our last photo shoot. So if I can find those, I'll share those in the notes so that you can kind of see like, well, what does it actually look behind the camera? Because uh, you're going to be moving a lot of stuff around, moving a lot of the client's personal things out of the way. And it can feel a little bit, uh, assuming that the house is, the home is occupied, um, it can feel a little bit invasive. And so, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to do that and not feel like you need to apologize for for everything or explain. Um, So you can just stay focused on the work that you you need to do. I I will say there's an exception to everything. One of my photo shoots, I had a client that works from home at single guy, cool as a cucumber. He doesn't have a bunch of kids. He doesn't have a whole lot of stuff to clean up uh, or move around prior to, although there was plenty of stuff that we had to move around, but he wanted to work from home and he wanted to see what it was like and be a part of it. And he had so much fun and he helped out, which was so cool. Um, But that is definitely the exception, not the rule. So you're the best person to understand what your relationship is like with your client, the scope, how much work has to be done, how much stuff is going to have to be moved, that kind of thing. So um, again, don't be in a hurry plan to spend some time uh, planning on figuring out the date and then moving from there. So once you've got your date set aside, you you want to first understand, is this going to be a half day shoot or full day shoot? And you'll, you'll work with your photographer to understand how long it's going to take. Most photographers offer a full day and half day um, options. Um, you want to ask them, how many shots can I expect out of a half day or a full day? Because that's going to help you sort of plan your shot list, which we're going to get to in a minute. Another thing that I just want to mention before we move into the actual planning is I highly recommend you work with a natural light photographer. Typically in architectural and interior design photography, the interior lights are not turned on. If you don't believe me, open up your Instagram, go to your favorite designer and just look at their interiors and nine times out of 10 lights are not on. Like I said, don't send me hate mail. There's an exception to everything. Sometimes leaving the lights on is a stylistic choice in interior photographies, but that's not typical. Compare that to say real estate photographer. 
they turn it all on, um, but they are also using wide angle lenses, that sort of thing. It's a very different uh, type of photography, real estate photography than doing interior design photography. So make sure that you're working with a photographer that specializes in interior design photography. And typically they're going to be a lights off photographer and utilize natural light. Okay. If you want to learn more about that, I encourage you to go back and listen to our interview with Jeff Jones. And again, we'll be sure to link to that in the show notes. You've got your photographer and you've got your photography date set aside. The first thing you want to do is you want to start by doing a scouting trip to the property, to the home, to the project, to develop your shot list. Now, there have been a couple of times where I've already accessorized a home and I've done, I've gone through the accessories process. Sometimes the photo shoot goes hand in hand with that. So you might be doing a lot of accessorizing while you're doing your photo shoot process and sometimes not. It just depends. I've, I've done it both ways for various reasons, but some of what you hear me talk about today when it comes to accessorizing and styling is also going to apply if you're doing that final step of accessorizing and styling a client's home. Um, so some of this may have already been done or you may do it in coordination with your photo shoot. Okay, so you want to come up with your shot list. I um, will go to a project and I will take my phone and I will literally move around the space and sort of figure out what angles I'm going to want the photographer to capture. You're going to want a mix of full room shots and you will also want to include a few detail or vignette shots. So think about how you might um, build that out. So think about your big overall pictures. Um, typically landscape is how uh, we shoot for magazines, whereas portrait is oftentimes used for digital and social media. So you also want a mix of those, but it's really important to think about your intention. What do you intend to do with these photos? If getting them published in a magazine is your primary focus, is your, your priority, then you're going to want to really focus on those wide angle uh, landscape shots. Um, but don't forget to go ahead and get some of those portrait shots, some of those close-ups, some of those detail shots and, and vignette shots. I also want you to think about and consider the lighting throughout the day. So some harsh uh, lighting, um, you know, can, can pose some challenges, but your photographer, a good one is going to have filters and all kinds of things to get the lighting just right. So um, really, you just want to think about when does the space get the best lighting. And, you know, you might even do your scouting trip with your photographer, if that's something that they're open to. Um, and they can sort of think about, you know, we might do better shooting this place in the afternoon versus in the morning. So think about uh, lighting and how it moves throughout the day. Once you get your shot list, um, I like to just put it in a Google Doc and put in put it in order of my priorities because you know there's going to be a couple of money shots, like the ones that are just going to be like, oh, chef's kiss, so beautiful. And you want to make sure that you're spending the most time on those and you're really getting it right. And then there might be some spaces or areas that were less of a priority. Maybe you didn't put a whole lot of work or effort into them, but still you transform them and you want to get them put those lower on the list. So when you're developing your shot list, uh, you can focus on your priority spaces first. Now, this next step is planning my styling. Now, I'm a planner by nature, and some of it is very planned. It's really thought through, and some of it is just intuition, and I just bring a whole lot of stuff, and I kind of see what works the day of. It's a mix, but I do like to put in some time planning in advance. So a couple of things that I do is I start with getting inspiration. If let's say I'm doing a kitchen, I now I've done this. I've got all the Pinterest boards saving, saving these things, but I, I will go through Pinterest as my favorite. And I will look at some of my favorite designers and how have they styled spaces? I think about the mood and the vibe and the feeling and the context of this, of my particular project. And what, how do I want it to feel? How do I want it to come across? Do I want it to be light, bright, energizing, or do I want it to be moody and, and sort of dark and, and ambient? From there, I'll sort of think about well, what else might I need to style this shot with. Okay, so I'll open my books. I will get on Pinterest and I will really dig into um, getting inspired and thinking about what it is that I might want. And alongside that, 
I've got a little note and I am typing out a shopping list. Okay, well, what do I need for this shot? What do I what do I already have that I can use? Because yes, I've got a closet full of styling accessories, um, but also I will often um, purchase some additional things, some new things um, that I will offer to the client to keep if they want. And pro tip, nine times out of 10, they end up keeping those items uh, and there's very little to return just depends if I've already really fully accessorized the place, which was the case for one of my projects that I just did this month. It had been fully accessorized. So there's really very little to add to it for that photo shoot. But then the other one, uh, one of the other ones was um, we did a prime. Well, anyway, long story short, it needed that last layer. It needed that last layer of art, uh, soft goods, um, accessories, those kind of things. And so there was a lot more effort done on that. So it just depends project by project how it might be. So anyway, I'm getting inspired. I'm making my list. And one trick that I like to do, and and I, if I haven't already accessorized a, play, a place, this is definitely where I start, but I will print out in black and white and at 50% opacity. So I'll throw it into Canva. I'll drop in my cell phone picture my um, that I got from my shot list. I'll drop it into Canva and I'll reduce it to 50% opacity and I'll print it out. And the reason I print it out to 50% opacity, one, it takes less ink. Two, it allows me to draw on top of the picture. And so once I print them out, let's say I've got a living room vignette, um, I will sketch on that coffee table, for example. Okay, I want a tray. I want a big, huge uh, branch arrangement. We're going to need some books on this console table. We're going to need some additional cushions or pillows on this couch. We're going to need a throw blanket for these chairs. Um, if it's a kitchen, okay, we want to um, get a big vase for the island. We want to, you know, and I'll just sort of sketch out what it is that I'm thinking and that visual act really, well, first of all, it's fun, but it also helps me come up with my shopping list. So between getting inspired with your books and Pinterest uh, and printing out and sketching over your photos, you can really come up with a strong shopping list. You might be shopping for botanicals. You're going to need lots of botanicals for your photos, uh, branches, florals, leaves. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. Um, any sort of a kitchen or dining space, oftentimes you might be purchasing food and produce to really bring some life and color into it. Um, when you're shooting for, well, I, I say magazines, but really anything uh, for your portfolio, I really like to shoot from a lifestyle lens. Um, that's different than shooting for um, and styling for, let's say, real estate or even architecture. Because we are interior designers, we are selling a lifestyle. We're selling a vibe, a feeling, a mood. And so in those shoots, I want to bring in objects and, and, and life that is going to bring the image to life that's going to bring the space to life. And so we'll, we'll get into that more when I specifically start talking about how to style spaces. Um, but so you want to, you want to bring those kinds of objects in because it wants to feel authentic. It wants to feel lived in and not overly, um, produced, you know, that's, that's my approach to styling for my photo shoots for any time we're, we're doing them, regardless of what it's for, whether it's for my portfolio only, or whether I think I want to try to get it published, um, that sort of thing. Before I get into styling, I just want to mention this last sort of like uh, logistical piece. Um, you want to really prepare yourself and prepare the space before your photographer arrives. Their time, you're paying for their time. And so you don't want to be styling or putting a space together when they're getting there. You want to have at least one space fully ready to start shooting right away. So if you don't have access to the home the day before, we did three shoots in three days. So I'm going to talk about those specifically. All three were pretty much whole home photo shoot. And so one of my clients, the one that didn't help me on the photo shoot, they actually got out of town for the, the weekend They because they had kids and they were like, this place is going to be a mess. So they were so generous. They had their house cleaned and then they left for the whole weekend, giving me access to the house and to be able to do that. Um, that was incredibly generous. I didn't ask them to do that, but I was so grateful that they did. So we were able to go in the day before, prep the house for the most part so that we could get started with our photographer the next morning. If you don't have that kind of time, you want to see how early can you get in there so that you can start to prep the space so that you have at least one full space, fully ready to go. I highly, highly, highly recommend having an assistant. 
This could be literally anybody. I hired this time, go around because I'm not working with any assistants right now, um, our babysitter. And she was phenomenal. And she came in and here's what she helped me to do. So when you come in, when you're getting started, you're going to start to pull away and move away all electronics, all cords, all unnecessary items. You want a completely clean slate to start off with, right? So we like to come in and first take a picture of how everything was right when we got there, because we want to try to put it back exactly, if not better as it was before. And so she came in took the picture so she could move the blender, the toaster, all that stuff, get it out of the way, hide it somewhere where the camera's not going to capture it. And she can sort of move things around. We can get one space ready. So then he comes in and we shoot that space. While he's shooting that space, she and I are working together to prep the next space if if it's not already done, if it's not ready to go. So we can be sort of, you know, tweaking. Um, I, I'm mostly working with him, right? I'm looking at his iPad and I'm making little tweaks as we go. He'll shoot, I'll tweak, I'll shoot, I'll tweak, I'll fix it till it's just right. Once we get it just how we want it, then he goes through and does his full set of shots. And so again, you can get more information about this in the interview with Jeff, but they're shooting multiple exposure levels. So really low light, really bright light. And then they blend it all together in post-production. And so the camera cannot move. you got to get everything just right. And then you get all of those shots. So I'm mostly working with him doing that, but my assistant is able to help sort of prep that next space, that next room. So when we're done with that shot and we move on to the next space, she can be coming around behind us and sort of putting things back how they were. And so Having an assistant can really help save you a lot of time so that you can focus on getting the right shot and you're not distracted by having to prep or clean up um, other spaces in, in the room. So having an assistant, someone that can help you do that is just a huge lifesaver. Are you ready to make 2024 your best year yet? Are you ready to stop flying by the seat of your pants and move into the new year with intention and clarity? If you're ready to escape the feast or famine cycle, don't miss my upcoming masterclass, the annual planning for interior designers workshop. This is the fourth year I'm hosting it, and it's going to be better than ever. Join me live on November 16th for this interactive power packed workshop. The truth is most successful interior designers are the ones who can cast their vision and then make a plan to get there. But that's not always easy to do on your own. And I want to help. I have dedicated my career to helping interior designers build thriving businesses. And I'm inviting you to join and learn how you too can enjoy a business that supports you personally, creatively, and financially. We'll talk about the power of intention, how to set your intentions for the year, and then put them at the center of decision-making in your business. We'll take a look back at your past year and help identify opportunities for growth and improvements to refresh your business. I'll help you design your ideal year so you can build a business that supports, not competes with your personal time, vacations, rest, and play. I'll give you the tools to reverse engineer your revenue plan so you have clear strategic goals broken down into bite size and manageable pieces. And finally, we'll dial in on a marketing strategy that factors in your personality, budget, and time into the equation. I want you to get in the right mindset so you can achieve the results you want in your interior design business. Get ready to design your year with intention. Head over to designersoasis.com forward slash plan and register today. Again, that's designersoasis.com forward slash plan and register today. Spots are limited, so don't wait. I can't wait to see you there. So let's talk about styling now. Again, at this point, you want to make sure you're pulling away all electronics, your little speakers, your whatever, you know what I'm talking about, all the stuff that we all have in our house, right? And you're going to get all of that stuff out of the way before you start styling. I want you to think of spaces in layers and furnishings alone are your base layers. A room without layers is going to fall flat. It is going to feel unfinished. Even minimalist spaces need layers. And you can think about layers in terms of 
a, a lot of times I like to think about it in terms of textures, right? So, uh, and, and mixing different textures. So if you have a chunky textural blanket, maybe you opt for a velvet or leather cushions, thinking about stacking books together, thinking about objects on top of books or candles or whatever the case may be on a coffee table, not just putting a tray underneath objects so that it feels corralled, so that it feels intentional and it feels kind of substantial. Those are a couple of ways that you can start to layer things together so that it feels lived in, right? And, and that's really what we want. Let's think about a kitchen for a minute. Of course, you've cleared off all of the countertop appliances, not so much as a coffee pot should be on the table. If you're asking me, get all of those countertop appliances out of there. Um, less is more when it comes to your kitchen, but you can still bring in life. You can bring in character. You can bring in interest through uh, some of these lifestyle accessories. So uh, let's start by thinking about color. Think about what colors are already happening in this space. And you need to decide, do you want to play off of that? Or do you want to add a pop of contrasting color? You know, fruit is kind of a very traditional thing to add to um, a styling shot for a kitchen. Uh, but I want to encourage you to think beyond your typical apple bowl. Um, there is just, you know, a rainbow of colors available to you. And so instead of just picking a random item, think about what colors are already happening in the space and how you might want to play off of those um, or blend in with them. It just kind of depends on the mood and the vibe that you're really going for. So um, there's no hard and fast rule about any of this. It's it's you get to be the creative uh, driver here. And it really is one of the most fun aspects of, of the work that we do. When thinking about produce, you know, maybe uh, th let's think about context for a second, right? Where is this home? Is it a country home? Is it a beach home? Is it a, a southern home? Is it a mountain home? Um, and how can you bring in accessories and produce that takes into consideration context? You know, if I'm photographing a southern kitchen, you bet there's going to be some lemons in there. Um, a big, huge bowl of big, juicy lemons is definitely probably going to be part of the shot. Do you have a Mediterranean or a coastal Californian space? Um, artichokes have uh, gorgeous color and texture, and they're just really structural and beautiful. I love artichokes. Um, you can try pomegranates, uh, of course, lemons, mandarins, pears. Think about how you can utilize those and, and uh, bring them in in a way that feels more authentic and not forced. Again, thinking about lifestyle, you may choose to simply arrange them in a bowl, but you may decide you want to go a step further and cut some fruit on a cutting board and sort of show that um, action shot, right? Uh, maybe uh, instead of flowers next to the sink, you do a, a, a jar full of cilantro, which just looks beautiful and lush and green. Maybe you bring in a fresh uh, rustic loaf of bread, or maybe you brew a French press of coffee. Those kinds of um, styling techniques are going to make an image come to life. The stagnant image is going to start to come to life and feel really lived in and natural and authentic. Outside of the kitchen, there are other things you can do. You can uh, have a, an, a book open with a mug of tea or cocktail. Uh, in kids' rooms, you can look at what do they already have going on in the space that you can use? Can you pull out a kid's skateboard? Are there building blocks or stuffed animals that you could use to sort of uh, build this scene, right? Create this this scene that feels lived in shoes. I love to bring in shoes. Um, we did, you know, this Texas ranch country home and we, we did some exterior work in the front door, really beautiful front door. Um, we reached in the front closet and grabbed the homeowner's pair of cowboy boots and stuck them by the front door. And it looked great. You know, um, another shoot that I did earlier this year, really hip, cool young couple. And she had this kick-ass pair of Converse shoes. So on the front entry, we set um, a, a bag, like a, a leather handbag that she had next to her pair of Converse and left the door ajar, right? Opening a door, it, it sort of activates the photo. Um, so it doesn't feel so stagnant. So think about how you can sort of activate a space with um, real life, everyday objects. Uh, think about a dining table. Um, think about what you might be doing if you're entertaining. Well, if I'm entertaining, I'm probably going to be taking in a, a stack of plates and some napkins. So maybe for a dining room shot, you want to put in a big stack of plates, maybe some glassware, maybe um, you want to take some, a couple of linens and drape them over them. Make sure that things are really well pressed. Oh, and I should just, I'm just going to pause and go rewind a minute ago to the prep 
beforehand, put yourself, put a kit together of things that you think you might need. And one of those things is definitely going to be a steamer. Uh, linens on beds are it's one of the hardest things to photograph because it shows all the shadows. Um, so trying to get things as crisp and clean as you can um, is really going to result in, in better shoots. So there's furniture sliders is an important thing to put in that box. Command strips are great for temporarily hiding stuff, hiding cords. You know, we want things to look lived in and real. Um, I go back and forth with, do we let the cords show? Do we not? Up to you. But a lot of times I just like to, to I'll tape cords somewhere so that you can't see it. Um, that kind of thing. So, all right, back to where we were. When I was mentioning putting folded linens on napkins, make sure that things are messy and they look really nice and crisp. A couple last things before we wrap up, botanicals. Botanicals is sort of, for me, all encompassing of uh, limbs, twigs, flowers, greenery, all of that. So I sort of lump it, even produce, you could say. Every shot needs botanicals. If there's a shot that doesn't have natural organic materials in it, I promise you it is a missed opportunity. It will fall flat. Every shot needs botanicals. You don't need to spend a bunch of money on big, expensive, professional floral arrangements. I have done that and they look great, but you know what? So do the going to the grocery store and getting a giant, like four or five things of tulips, you know, or roses or whatever. So I realized over the years that that was kind of a waste of money to have these big professional floral arrangements done, but sometimes it needed it, but more times than not, it just needs something a little more simple because otherwise I felt like the arrangement took, uh, took over the shot. It, it sort of commanded more attention than the room itself. Okay. So botanicals, again, you don't need to spend a lot of money. Don't spend a bunch of money on big expensive arrangements. A large amount of a single kind of flower or leaf works beautifully. Don't believe me. Hop on Pinterest. I will even find my Pinterest board from uh, my inspiration board and see if I can find that. And if I can, I will, um, I will share that with you in the show notes so you can see some examples. But first of all, if you have a resale license, find a local wholesale florist. You can get large amounts of flowers and filler for much cheaper than you would buy at the grocery store. And if you're doing a big whole home project, chances are you're going to need quite a bit of that. Um, so using wholesale florists um, can be a great option. Trader Joe's has really inexpensive um, flowers and greenery that you can buy uh, quite a bit of without breaking the bank. Uh, another thing is that artificial, you know, you don't want to get the cheapest of the cheap. You don't want to spend some money, but if you're doing a lot of photo shoots and you likely are, artificial flowers and leaves, as long as they're not super, super cheap, you can't really tell the difference in photos. Um, and I, and I asked my photographer if he agreed photographer, if he agreed with me on this and he said, absolutely, you cannot tell the difference between a giant vase of real branches versus fake. And I guarantee you, you have penned, saved, been in awe of bookmarked inspirational images without even realizing that what you were looking at was a fake set of branches. So we typically do a mix. We have we have a collection of faux um, branches, greenery, flowers that we use in certain places, but we always also buy some fresh stuff as well. So for us, it's kind of a mix. Uh, greenery filler flower works beautifully. So you can try seeded eucalyptus is gorgeous. I just used a lot of that in my last um, couple of shots. Ferns, uh, limonium, lavender, all of these um, sort of filler flowers can, can add that organic, beautiful textural aspect to your photos, but they don't steal the show. It is, it is like, oh, it's just like, um, it's like these final touches. It's almost like they fade into the background and you don't even notice them, but if they weren't there, something would feel off. Does that make sense? So again, steer away from this idea that you need to have a whole bunch of custom made bouquets. You can use simple greenery. You can use big bunches of a single type of flower. Again, uh, tulips, roses, those kind of things, hyacinth, geranium. Well, I like light geranium, so but I'm partial. <laughs> 
um, you know, think about the context of the home, think about where it is, what makes sense for that space uh, and, and go from there. Let that be your, your sort of guide and, and just one big group of flowers on a, on a coffee table or in the kitchen or whatever can, can look really beautiful. Okay. And then the last thing before we go is I just wanted to mention art for a second. I have had projects where we were asked to use the client's art. Um, and sometimes that art isn't something that resonates for me or that is really reflective of my style or what I want to be known for. There's nothing wrong <clears throat> with removing a piece of art uh, and replacing it temporarily for the photo shoot with something that is more you. Okay. That's just just want to relieve you of any expectations that you can't do that. You absolutely can do that. I've also had situations where our clients simply didn't have something and we didn't, you know, maybe it wasn't in the scope of work for us to do art. Um, so we needed to bring in something to supplement. So, um, you know, you can do this a couple of ways. If you've got a good relationship with some of your trade vendors, it could be a situation where you're borrowing. Maybe you're offering to sell it to your client and that's a possibility. Uh, we've brought in our own art. We have a collection of some things that we've used. I've bought and returned things sometimes. Uh, you sometimes just have to get creative, right? Another really simple trick to fill up a big, we had to do this recently to fill up a big wall um, sort of last minute was we created a gallery wall uh, using off the shelf, ready to fill frames. And we filled it, the, the client, the goal for the client was eventually to fill it with their own art and their own family photos. But what we did was I said, send me like five of your last favorited photos in your photo album of you and your family. Just don't overthink it. Just send me like five to 10 of your last favorite photos and mixed that in with printable art that we got off of Etsy. And this was like such a hack that turned out so well, but we needed something for that space and we didn't have time to curate everything. And so with the client's permission and the clients paid for all of this, we purchased all of the frames. We did a, a mix of metal and wood and, and all of those. We got their family photos and we got printable art and we had it all printed at our local print shop. Uh, within a few hours, we had it. And then our handyman came and helped us arrange and hang it and really filled that space. And it looks beautiful. And they were literally crying because they loved it so much. They were like, we're not doing anything with this. But, you know, I put thought into it. I, I thought about who these clients were and what kind of art would resonate with them. And at the end of the day, um, I think it was successful. I think we really made them happy. So, you know, if you've got a space that's not fully finished, find ways or fully layered, find ways to make it work for the photo shoot because it will always, always, always make your shots look better. They will look, your spaces will feel more finished. They will feel more authentic and lived in. And uh, you will, you will have a better result at the end of the day. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you have really gotten inspired for your next photo shoot and, and really uh, plan to put a good amount of effort into it. Okay. Think about the context of the project and what makes sense. Spend time doing some research and research and planning and getting inspired. Supplement what the clients don't have. Plan to put some time and attention towards your photo shoot and just treat it like the investment that it is and it will pay off. Okay, that's all for now. Uh, check the show notes for the links and I look forward to meeting you back here real soon. Bye for now. Hey friend, thank you so much for letting me spend a part of this day with you. I'm so passionate about helping designers like you, and I believe in a rising tide that when one of us does well, we all do better. So if you share this attitude of abundance with me, I want you to do just one little thing. Please share this episode with someone you think might love it. And if you're feeling extra generous today, go ahead and take just 30 seconds to open your podcast app and leave us a five-star rating and review. It's free for you to do, and it helps me to be able to keep making more episodes and resources for you. However you choose to help, please know I appreciate you so very much. Thank you, my friend. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Yeah.